Hello, welcome to Bedroom Builds at the From Python to Rust series, episode 38, plotting, coming from the previous episode where we spoke about vector graphics. For plotting, I'm going to show you the implementation of uh, the same plot in matplotlib for Python and in the plotter's crate for Rust. Rust has already many other crates that are implementing plotting. The plotter's one seems to be one of the most flexible one out there as of now. For Python, there are many, many more options. And even outside of Python and Rust, you can use existing JavaScript solutions and of course some other plotting where you only have to provide the data. Anyways, let's hop over into the code to see those examples. On the left, as usual, we have our Python code. And as you can see, we are importing matplotlib and the ticker plus JSON to read the data from the COVID um, infection rates. So we see in the first comment on uh, both codes where you can download the JSON file. It is fairly uh, big. As of this recording, it's about 50 something megabytes. What I did in uh, Python is I defined the countries that we want to look at. So this will be the country codes and then the overall world infections. Then in order to plot in Python, you will have to create a subplot and to change the dimensions a bit to have a better readable legend and stuff, I chose to go by a 14 by eight uh, ratio. Here we then load the JSON data. Once uh, we have done this, we can go over all the countries we wanna analyze. We pass the country to the data key. We read the data rows and for every row we get uh, the new cases and the total cases and then we can plot on the x-axis the total cases on the y-axis the new cases and the label of the plotting line will be the country's name so that's maybe not the best variable names out there so c is the country name new cases total cases Once this has been done, we can now start uh, formatting the plot. Since uh, the data is exponentially uh, growing infection rates, we want to use a logarithmic scale. So we use that for the x-axis and for the y. Then we can use custom uh, ticks. This can be done in matplotlib by the set x ticks method. To avoid uh, using the scientific notation for normal population. We can use a scalar formatter and we turn scientific notation off. Then we can set this as the formatter for the x axis and therefore we will get those large numbers printed as they are. For the y scale we can do the same but here we can use the default scalar formatter because for those small numbers he doesn't use scientific notation. Then we want to be able to set a title, give the axes a description. So for the x-axis, we'll have the total cases, for the y-axis, the new cases. And the code continues a bit further. We also want to show a grid. And we want to show the people where we have this data from in our plot. This is done with the plot thick text method. In order to position the legend nicely, I found this uh, code snippet in the matplotlib documentation. So what you would do is uh, you get the box size of your uh, plot, so the axis, and then you would change the width of it to 70% of the original one. This way you get the space on your canvas to draw the legend outside of your plot. You would then can add the legend which you would normally only probably provide with a title. But here we get to then also position it a bit outside and on the center on to the left. We can then save this to an SVG file, which is what we will do in the Rust code. The advantage of matplotlib as of now is you can simply use plt show and it will show you in your operating system the graphical plot right away. You don't have to open the file. 
in a browser, for example, or in a graphics program. Now for the Rust code, this is actually not much more complicated. All we have to do is load our plotters create uh, prelude stuff, get um, file system reading with a buff reader going. Then, you know, because we are reading a JSON data from a file, we are using the amazing 30 library. And here we derive the serialize for a struct that gives us the daily data. In our case, the new cases and total cases. Sometimes this information is empty or not available. That's why we have to use the 30 default. In uh, Python, this trick was done as well, which you can uh, see here when we load the new cases we are using get. If it's not available, we return zero. This is what the 30 default will be doing for you. Below we use as well this serialize for the country data. So here we have a property that we call data, which can be found inside of the JSON struct. And in there we will have the rows of daily data. Hence we are using a vector of data type daily data, which is defined up here. The output uh, name will is a static string. And then we start our main function. In order to plot with plotters, we have to decide which backend we want to use from the start. So here we have to use the SVG backend from the beginning with a file name, pixel dimensions, and off we go. We will fill this with a white background. So when I will show you the example plot, the screen will become bright. I'm already warning you now. Then we will split our drawing area into the upper section where we will actually plot our plot. And in the lower section, we write the information where we got this data from. So the lower gets this uh, title text with a fairly small font. And we can uh, show that. Below here, you can already see that we start a chart builder. Let's hop down and see what uh, this is doing for us. Instead of a title, they use uh, the method uh, caption to give the whole plot a title. So the world COVID cases is done this way here on the left, you can see it's a set title. That's basically learning this other library from their documentation. Here we get to set a few custom uh, formatting options like area sizes, margins and whatnot. And here we then get to define our plotting ranges. So we go from 20 to five million. We use the log scale, we have our key points and this is now the description of the x-axis and the second part of the Cartesian 2D one will be the y-axis same thing but a smaller range also log scale a bit different uh, key points so those customizations are done here in the Python code then uh, we can use the description of the x-axis and y-axis this is called the X and Y label in the case of matplotlib. Once we have that, we can draw our chart. And now we get to the code where we actually read from our JSON and data. Parsing the JSON data is fairly easy because we have the amazing 30 JSON library. This one understands that if there is a dict in the JSON, we can simply we serialize that into a hash map, which is what the format of this COVID data has. Every key is the country code. Therefore, this hash maps key type of a string will be actually the country code and the format of country data we have already defined up top. If you remember, the struct has the member called the data, which is again then a ticked key in the JSON format. And inside country data, we have the rows with the actual information we want to look at. So this line does all that for us. Since we only want to look at uh, certain country codes inside the data we just parsed, what we do is we iterate over those uh, country codes and we enumerate. In this way, we will get uh, the index. So China, in this case, will be zero and USA will be one and so on. And we can look at the series of data that we've parsed for them. 
The reason for having an index is fairly easy. We want to have a separate color for every plot line and uh, we can use the palette 99 to pick a color by the index of our data. In order to draw these new and total cases, what uh, we are doing here is we deconstruct the daily data struct. This is the parse the data. Series is actually the country code that we look at. This has the property data. We can iterate over it. We map every element that we find inside of there to this daily data reference. But since this is Rust, we can uh, deconstruct the argument of the closure that we pass to map. So in this case, the daily data to its properties, new cases, and total cases. The dot dot notation means that we do not care about other properties that daily data might, ho might hold. And this makes the following code then very easy. We return a tuple of total cases and new cases in the expected U32 data type. The other argument that we have for our line series is then the stroke width. Once this is done, the question mark will error out if we run into a problem. We can provide a label. In this case, series is the country code. And with this builder pattern, we can provide the data for our legend. This gets passed X and Y. We can provide a rectangle and the color that we've chosen has to be the same as for the line we just plotted. So this way, the legend will match what we have uh, plotted. Afterwards, you can see here, we can uh, do some more uh, tricks, do the drawing. And once we call uh, present, this will actually be saved to the SVG file. If this fails, this expect will uh, tell you when I go away. This will uh, tell you that the file writing failed. If it was successful, we will get an output that it has been saved to the out file name. Looking at uh, the plot, we see that the logarithmic scaling works as we wanted it to. Plus we get to have our custom ticks on both uh, axes. Here we get our text for our data source. This was the title that we've created. All those lines are the existing data for the respective countries. And we can see here, then also in the legend, the different country names associated with the color. This uh, blue one is the overall world stats on total cases and uh, new cases. Of course, there is much, much more to plotting as in other plot types, for example, and then maybe even going to interactive uh, 3D plots. This was just a short introduction showing you that libraries in both languages exist that give you very powerful options to customize your plots. Thanks for watching. Coming up next on the From Python to Rust series will be FLTK.